Hi, and welcome to our Linux tutorial. So today we'll be discussing about Linux file system structure navigation, how we can move from one working directory to another, create directories, understand about the file system structure and the executable permissions within each of the different files, as well as subdirectories and be able to remove those directories and navigate seamlessly across all these file systems so that you're able to better understand where files are parked how can you access those files, what are the permissions needed to access them, and whether you can execute them later on as you go into the more advanced Linux tutorials. So without further ado, let us get started today in the tutorial. So here I have Ubuntu running, and you can right click on the desktop and click on Open Terminal. And once you do that, you can zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. So the first command that we're going to use is PWD. So that stands for Print Working Directory. So it will tell you exactly which directory you're currently at so that you know how you can navigate across the file system and you can enter man pwd so man is a manual page and it will tell you which of the commands they're using what are the options the parameters and so on so man is also a very very useful function that you use day to day to tell you exactly what each of the parameters what each of the program applications are using will do so moving forward, we will enter ls. So ls actually help us list down the files and folders within the existing working directory by default. So you can enter man ls again. And here it says list directory contents. And it lists the current directory by default. And you have a dash a for all. You have dash capital A and so on. So you have a number of parameters. And the main parameters that I usually use will be dash l. So if I enter ls dash l, so this will list down more content and information regarding each of the file directory and applications within the current directory. So here we can see that we have a DR which stands for directory and then we have the permissions of the file directory all the way to the end. And of course we have the user. So over here you can see the user, the date, time date stamp, as well as the name of the file and the size of the file. So again, this is a highly useful way for you to list down all the contents within a working directory. And we have CD. So if I enter man CD, CD is actually for us to do changing of directory. So if you do CD, you actually be able to do, say for example, I can navigate into a directory like public. So all I got to do is CD public, capital P-U-B-L-I-C. So here we can see directly that we have navigated into the public directory. So here we can see that we have changed the directory. Or you can put CD with two dots. And this would actually bring you out into nearer to the root directory. So once you hit that and you enter PWD again, you'll be able to see that you have navigated out from public back to the parent folder. And you can do again CD followed by dot dot. So this would actually navigate you even further nearer to root outside of your current child directory into the parent directory. So if I enter PWD, print working directory, we can see that we are at the home directory. And if I do a final one, CD dot dot, this would get us into the root directory. So if I do a print work directory again, I can see that we are at the root file structure. The next important command that we'll be using is the MKDIR. So this stands for make directory. So we can do MKDIR followed by say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And once I hit enter, it says it cannot because it's a permission deny. So I can CD into the home folder using the this sign over here. So once we are in, we can enter make directory MKDIR followed by A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this would create a directory within the existing directory that you're working on. So if I do a ls-l over here, we can see that we have created the directory called abcdefg. And again, moving forward, we can actually use the rmdir to actually remove the directory. So this is a way for you to remove directories that you no longer need or no longer use. And when I enter ls-l again, I would see that the directory is no longer there and that it has been removed. And of course, we also have the df command. So I can enter man df so df command actually help us look out on the file system disk space usage so we have a number of options again likewise for everything that you've seen so far on all the options and parameters so the first thing you can do is you can actually enter df so once you hit enter it will tell you the file system and the number of 1000 blocks that you have whether it's in use and the availability of each of those blocks or file systems 
So for example, if I go back into MANDF, so there is a particular option that we're using. So we can actually look at dash capital H. So this will actually help us look into a segment of 1000 blocks in megabytes or in gigabytes. So if I enter dash DF dash capital H and I hit enter. So here we can see the different file systems as well as the associated size use and availability in megabytes or in gigabytes in the size of uh, 1000. So there you see it, how quickly we could navigate across the different subdirectories of a Linux file system and be able to list out all the files, content, as well as directories and be able to create and remove them. And this would actually help us bring ourselves into a more advanced Linux tutorial. So I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. So feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions and I'll try my best to answer any of those questions. So remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest technology. Thank you so much for watching.